Okay. All right. So good morning to everybody on the uh, online class, as well as a warm welcome to those who've been, uh, who's joined us on the e-learning portal. Um, we hope uh, that this course will bring about um, a lot of revelation to you, as well as an understanding of how we can walk in, in a wholeness and emotional wellness. Okay, uh, let's just start with a word of prayer and uh, we can get started. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness in our lives over the last very many months that you have brought us once again to study something new. Thank you, God, for the way that you've made each one of us, Lord, marvelously made. Thank you, Father, for giving us our personality, giving us uh, inner emotions, in which we express ourselves and we show our love to you and to those around. Lord, as we journey through this course, we pray that you will reveal to us the innermost anxieties, angst of our souls, and you would bring us to a place of wholeness by your word, and by your spirit. Lord, we submit this to you, and we pray that you will uh, bring us to greater revelations of your truth and your word, and we will walk, Lord, in the freedom that you've purchased for us. Thank you, Father. Lord, I, I pray for every student here, Lord, as we journey through this, Lord, that uh, we would be open to the work of the Spirit in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, um, welcome again. Mm, this course is, uh, you know, I think it's very close to uh, all, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm sure that, you know, even as you enrolled into this or part of your, part of the course, uh, this is something that would have definitely uh, brought about an interest to you because of, uh, uh, you know, the, the very fact that we all, we all understand that we are emotional beings. We are emotional people. And uh, but there are many things that we go through uh, in life, many problems that we may face in the realm of our inner man or the soul. And uh, as we've journeyed through life, we've seen how there can be emotional problems that we have faced. Um, it could be uh, issues in the way that we emote or uh, deep feelings that we may be having of uh, uh, inadequacy or feelings of insecurity um, deep feelings of um, or deep thoughts of lust or being involved in addictions and, and the list goes on. So what we want to do through this course is one, identify uh, these problems and what causes these problems and not, and not just leave it there, but also find ways in how we can reach or we can have our healing and our deliverance and also understand how we can continue to walk in that wholeness and well-being. So um, more than looking at this like as an academic exercise, uh, you know, I really pray that we open ourselves to receive the healing that God has for us. Mm, and uh, that we, just as much as we receive our healing, that we also stand um, equipped to help others and to minister wholeness and deliverance to those people who may be hurting around us. Okay, so in today's section, we are uh, 
we're going to be looking at the very first chapter. I hope you've got a copy of the uh, book. It's there. It has been uploaded in the stream for the online students and for the e-learning students. It's there um, in the, on the on the e-learning portal as well. So if you can uh, download it and follow through, that that will be that will be great. Okay. All right. So before we get started, I think I'd just like to um, uh, open up uh, maybe a question and also hear from from uh, from as many of us because, like I said, this is this is something that uh, we, we're looking at. This course as connecting um, what we're learning to our own selves, to our own uh, emotional selves. So. Um, uh, uh, I, even as I'm opening out this question, maybe I, I think I'd like to, um, you know, mention that if you feel it is too personal, you're you're free enough not to share. But um, what have you seen around as emotional problems, maybe within yourself or within people you've known, um, within people you've helped? What are some of the the concerns or the problems that you've seen people struggle with. Um, so if if you could just unmute and um, speak, that will help us to, you know, have a base before we uh, go forward. So I, either when when you've interacted with people or when you've um, uh, maybe your own uh, issues, our own own concerns, some things maybe that you've struggled with. Um, you don't have to give, you know, what those details are, but but generally to have a fair understanding of what you've noticed as some of the emotional problems or emotional concerns that people may go through. Yeah, I'm leaving it open for some interaction. <sighs> yes, Shay, please go. On. So, so um, one emotional trouble, trouble that one, or I would even use myself, for example, heartbreaks. Um, for instance, I ha I was in a relationship well, that was leading to marriage for four and a half years of courtship, and then um, you know one thing led to the other. I was traveling out of the country. There was fear that oh. I might just get involved with another person, then she decides to break up, you know. So that was a bit of a struggle. And um, the day I heard she was getting married, it was like a dagger going through my heart, you know. So, yeah, so heartbreaks, um, whether a guy or whether a lady, you know, it's one emotional um, um, disturbance or struggle that one could go through, especially if you don't get over the person, it could be tormenting, you know, and all that. So, yeah, that's uh, that's an example. Thank you. Thank you, Shay. Thank you for uh, opening that up. And I'm sure a lot of a uh, lot of us here do relate to that. Um, you know what Shay said. That example of having uh, heartbreaks, rejections, um, where um, you know where. Uh, relationships get are uh, broken. All right. Yes, uh, Rupa, please kindly unmute yourself and speak. Good morning, ma'am, and good morning, all. Good morning. I just wanted to share my struggle, why, what I went through. Uh, I have, we lost our mother when I was very young. It was I was around six years old that time. She was very close to my heart when. Our mothers, I, I know, we each one have our own place for our mothers. When I lost my mother, I made a vow saying, I will not open up myself to anyone else like that in my future. That was a very wrong thing I did in my childhood, making a vow like that, which really uh, made me very hardened not only myself, but the people around me was not able to communicate for many years. It was a very debilitating thing 
but by god's grace in god's light i have a, i have attended an inner healing seminar where i recognized and remembered that i made a vow like that which is not from god and i repented over it and i was set free from that i just wanted to share it thank you ma'am thank you rupa thank you for sharing that uh, i know this is you know even as you're sharing these things it's not easy because it's it's uh, a lot of uncover that uh, uncovering that we are doing here right when we become vulnerable about what uh, we've gone through but but i'm sure this is going to be of help to somebody uh, i think nisha uh, nisha has written in my family a person has issues with self esteem that he believes buying many vehicles make him feel makes him feel bigger uh, to also a level that he has several narcissistic traits he feels and says he is right and everyone is wrong okay so thank you nisha so this is a person having an issue with self esteem but projecting uh, extreme confidence and love of self uh, thereby um, you know uh, portraying a sense of superiority um as against the other people but within feeling almost broken and having a very poor self esteem wonderful thank you kennedy uh, you've written this is a uh, on this is for the uh, uh, for the e learning students i know that they cannot see the chat so i'm just reading this out mood swings due to binding magic power okay mood swings that come about uh, as a result of some kind of an influence demonic influence okay nisha you said um, your father was a pastor and he's lived with an expectation from the society uh, that he started rebelling okay rebellion all right um opening it out for any 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 other um student who would like to share about any kind of emotional problems you've noticed uh sham mine is uh, it's a bit different from everyone um i think mine is a sense of belonging um uh, like my 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 parents divorced when i was i think 4 and even though they remarried but i've never really lived for mother uh since then i've only seen a last time i saw her was in 2010 and yeah only saw her for two weeks uh so i think my sense of like longing for the motherhood i think that's my, my biggest emotion problem it's like this there's a, a void that i try to fill somehow thank you first thank you thank you once again mangi yes uh, as uh, i think as mangi said maybe the, the, these are things uh, childhood experiences that can lead people into having significant emotional issues whether it starts from whether it begins at home or any kind of adverse situations that happen to the child uh all of that brings about significant emotional struggles and emotional issues uh the way people are treated as uh, children are treated uh you know in in the initial years of life that also could have so we will be looking a little more in detail through the course of the class if anyone would like to share um because you know that it's you know it helps us as a as a community it helps us to understand that we're not alone uh, that you know as we've gone through life there have been a significant stresses that have been maybe there's been rejection multiple rejections either in uh through the way of relationships or through the way of opportunities or through the way of um maybe resources that have come to you uh which which you've not been able to hold on to there could be a rejection so uh 
taking some time to <clears throat> to understand this and to really focus and know the roots of this uh, really can be helpful and i'd encourage you all to you know even as we're going through uh, these problems in the latter half of the class you could probably take notes and um, identify what could be some things that has that you've struggled with uh, in your in in your inner man or in your inner person okay all right so uh, to to start i um, let's let's uh, look at i think something that's very important for us to um, understand is the way god made us as men um so when when god made us he made us as a being a tripartite being that means a three part being and when he uh, you know in genesis 2:7 it talks of how the lord formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life so when god breathed uh, into man there was something that was of himself that he uh, gave to man as well so we see that man is a three part being or a or a tripartite being and uh, uh, so we, so we see that every person all of us have if if we were to classify it we have the physical part of us and as well as the non physical part of us um and how do we understand this in in scripture uh in first thessalonians 523 uh it says uh, you know and and it makes a mention of this of these distinctions it says now may the god of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our lord jesus christ so this in in this verse it clearly suggests that uh god is desirous to keep us preserved blameless not just in our spiritual beings or in our physical beings but also even in our emotional beings so it talks about the the word excuse me the word preserved talks about how to safeguard or to keep away or to protect from harm or any form of an injury or a form of a loss so to keep whole these three these three areas so uh, it it it's something that god is desirous to do not just what he has given us in our in our outer bodies or in in our physical bodies but in our souls as well as the spirit now we will we will look at this um uh, we can we'll have a look at the distinctions um of this and um, uh, uh, but before we go there just just to uh, highlight another verse that talks about how it is perfectly right to pray that even just as your uh, body prospers that your soul prospers and we see that in uh, 3 john 1 2 it says beloved i pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers so it is a it is something it is perfectly right to pray that we prosper not just in uh, all things and be in health but also for the way that our souls um prosper uh if you know we we need to look at the soul the the well-being of our souls as so important because it is our soul that affects the our bodies and 
um, affects the way that we do all things. So it is it is a very important aspect of our uh, of our of our bodies. So I just I'm I'll just uh, um, let me just share uh, a diagram with you so that we can go through in understanding this better. Sorry, just give me a minute. Okay. All right. I hope you can see this. Yeah. Okay. So um, when we look at this this diagram, um, I I think it's it's uh, fairly clear about or or you know I'd, I'd like to probably take us through um, what what we notice here. So when you say we are a three part whole, we consider ourselves to have a body. To have a soul and to have a spirit. So just to go through each of this, and this is the way that we view our nature, that we have, like I said, we have a physical part or a material part, which is our body, and an imm immaterial part or the non-physical part, which is our soul and, um, and our spirits. Okay? So when we look at the body, it is, uh, it is by the body that we function. Um, so it's like uh, you know, if we were to give you, if I were to give you an example, uh, let's say you know, if you have a glove, you know, the glove in itself uh, is yes, the physical part of it, but it needs maybe a hand to give it life and to give it to function. So it is, it is the body that functions, and it is the body that interacts with um, the outside world or outside the physical world through our five senses. And, uh, you know, our five senses being our uh, vision, our, he uh, um, our hearing, our taste, our smell, and our touch. This is where we get our information from. So everything that comes to us is picked up by these physical senses through these five senses. And that's what makes the 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 body um, so if, if you see in this diagram you'll see that you know the the um, the body consists not just of our senses but it consists of um, everything that is physical so our brain our nerves the cells that we have um, every kind of interaction that takes place our nervous system all of this is what um, uh, comprises of the body so our, our body consists of things that you um, you know things that if, if you if you were to structurally see it, it has the nerves, it has the brains, and it, this is how we connect to the physical world with with our senses. So that's the part of the body. When we look at the uh, soul, yeah, when we look at the soul, um, the soul is what gives us our inner person or our personality, and it is through the soul that we live out our relationship with um, others we live out our relationship with with god okay and uh, yes and ourselves also so when we look at the soul we look at the major components of the soul and that is the mind it's the will and the emotions okay the mind um, the will and the emotions. So when you look at the uh, mind, we can look at it in two parts. It is something that is conscious and there is a subconscious part of us also. The conscious part of us is what makes us aware about our surroundings, helps us to make decisions, helps us to... Um, um, uh, think helps us to reason that's the conscious part of us and uh, the uh, so the, the 
the mind which has the conscious part is the, the conscious mind is like i said where we think and where we reason <clears throat> the subconscious part of us is um something that does not surface out always but these are certain beliefs or attitudes that we hold um from within um this is also a place where we have our emotions our feelings we retain some of our memories so this these are the two so you know all, although we've divided it into mind emotions and will the mind is the more conscious part of it where you're aware of the surroundings aware of reasoning aware of thinking whereas the emotional part is the place where it's more subconscious where uh, it comes as a result of maybe certain beliefs and attitudes that we may have the will is the place or is the seat which gives us the ability to make choices um so in a very complex way these the the mind the will the emotions are all connected to to the body and uh, uh, you know especially through um, through our um systems through our nervous or immune system so that's how you'd see you know um if you've uh, you know if you've heard of the word psychosomatic psychosomatic to mean that whatever psychological concerns or emotional concerns one may have it manifests in the soma or in the body soma meaning body it manifests out in the body someone who seem who is very stressed let's say multiple forms of stress gets manifested uh in in certain symptoms um in the body like um you know maybe uh, let me give you an example that when when you are exp- uh, when you are experiencing stress let's say at work or uh, or at any any anything specifically you'll begin to see that it it uh it erupts in your body you know you have uh, you're, you're probably having sweaty palms you're having um you know your your stomach doesn't feel okay you want to go to the toilet um you know you have your heart that's racing and pacing really fast you begin to get breathless you get a headache you feel dizzy now the, this this is what we mean by that in 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 a very complex way that the mind the will and the emotions are connected to the body so whatever happens in this part of the mind will and emotions you will see it being thrown out or uh, brought about um, uh, in the body okay so yeah so these these are the three specific areas and this is going to be the focus of our course of looking at the soul and looking at the problems of the soul and how we can have this part of it uh, emotionally whole the last part is our spirit now it's in our spirit that um at at that deepest level is what uh, this it's a spirit that gives us the meaning and purpose and it is our spirit that enables us to love god and to love one another it's through the spirit that we have fellowship and communion with god it is the spirit that gives us um uh that that intuition of being uh, uh, you know gives us that knowing of what is right and knowing what's wrong so our spiritual health um can have a very significant impact on our emotional health which of course like we said has a major influence on our physical health so the connection between the spirit the soul and the body yes is a is a very complex connection uh and this connection is very real you know like um you would have heard of um mm, uh, you know testimonies of people who've been who who've been touched by the lord and uh, um, so I, i i remember one of the um uh, in in bill johnson has spoken about this where he was um uh he was met by the lord and he, he you know for that entire time he wasn't his his body didn't function he couldn't move his body it was almost as if it was 
you know, it was as, as good as dead. So, uh, so we see that there is this complex connection and uh, understand that, um, uh, you know, and, and I think that's, that's why that, that John was inspired to write that in 3 John 1, 2, may your soul, may you prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. So this is an indication to us that um, it is important to attend to the matters of the soul. And because it relates to being healthy, it relates to being whole. So the when, when we're looking at the interaction between the spirit, the soul and the body, uh, like, like I said, you know, many of us are affected by how we sometimes handle difficulties or stress. So if there is chronic stress or chronic issues that go unchecked over a period of time, our bodies take a definite toll. Um, uh, but a, a, a spiritual standing or maturity of faith can help us to cope with the stress that we experience. And, and that becomes less, uh, you know, may not be that significant. The stress that we face may not be significant. So without that strong faith, um, what happens is you're resorting to your own resources to cope with the stress that is there in your life. So you're actually resorting to your, your emotional part of it, your, sorry, your, your soul part of it. And that's, that's when you see, you know, when there is a difficulty to cope and the coping happens maybe through other methods of escape, maybe an addiction or maybe uh, a wrong sense of uh, a, a wrong relationships. So this, the, this behavior often will further the stress that is there in our physical health. So the beliefs and our attitudes that we hold play also a major role in our thinking patterns. So how we think on a day-to-day -day basis have an effect on the way we emote and the way we feel. Uh, and you know that the emotions have a major impact on our behaviors. So I think I'd like to bring about a very simple um, principle here. Um, yeah. So I think there are some questions. I will, I'll definitely answer, answer those, okay? Um, uh, yeah, so, we, uh, so what, I was say, what I was talking about was the different, the, the, um, the thinking causes issues in our emotions and thereby in our behavior so uh so this is this is a uh, this is a principle that you, that you do that you learn in counseling and those of us who are in the counseling class will come through this principle that every situation that we go through or every kind of a life event that we go through has the potential to um bring about certain thoughts in our minds, okay? Um, like, for example, mm, like, you know, let's say a situation of illness, someone, someone has fallen ill. Now, we have a certain attitude and belief about illness, which is in the subconscious mind, and that begins to play on our conscious mind, and that's what we think, all right? So, for example, let's say the belief or the attitude that you have about sickness, about, a, you know, really, uh, um, um, uh, let's say a terminal or a, or a strong condition is that, you know, it's hard to be healed of this condition. So that's the attitude or the belief that is playing on the subconscious mind. And that comes to your conscious mind and that's how you begin to think. So when you think about an illness as... Uh, you, you know, you can't recover, it takes a really long time to recover, it plays on your emotions. It, there begins to become fear, it begins to happen, uh, have anxiety, worry, um, uh, all of that, right? And this, in turn, affects your behavior. Probably, um, you know, 
uh, we don't do what we're supposed to do maybe um you know speaking the word of god over 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 ourselves or uh, getting ourselves to doing things in the natural by getting getting uh, medical help or uh, you know speaking out our faiths we don't do that because whatever happens in our thinking is what really affects our emotions and that's what affects our behavior okay so to be conscious and to understand that um they all play a very major impact uh, our thought patterns play a significant role in the way that we we emote and the way that we hold uh, the way that we have our physical health okay uh, all right i'm just going to address some questions that are here um what is cho okay cho is just carbon hydrogen oxygen in the body okay it's just that's what the cells are um the 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 gaseous the uh, gaseous matter in the body is carbon hydrogen oxygen that's what the cho in that in that diagram was okay uh beth you had asked uh sorry i can't see this can you explain spirit is that what you said yeah can you explain spirit again okay uh, and mangi you said what is the difference between mind and heart yes we're going to we'll be coming to uh, to that uh, what is the difference between mind and heart okay so the spirit um, um okay it's it, that that is the part of us uh, that enables us to know god intimately through that relationship with god so the human spirit is what connects us with god um so in order to be connected to god we need to be alive spiritually uh, and if you're not if you're disconnected to god it means you're dead spiritually so uh, it is a, it's the human spirit is the element through which the spirit of god dwells in us after being after having salvation so the human spirit is alive only in communion with god so the spiritual truths or spiritual discernment comes through the human spirit because of the anointing of the holy spirit so the human the human spirit if we um uh you know it it is symbolic to life uh like like for example um uh, uh i'm trying to get an example so it it is it's that which which brings about um our connection with god and that's that's why uh, and 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 the spirit is the one i think i like i had mentioned earlier it's the spirit that gives us meaning and purpose in life the deeper level of having purpose and this and the spirit is that which enables us to um to be in connection with god it is through that spirit we have communion and fellowship with god it is also through the spirit that we have our understanding of right and wrong and this the spiritual part of us also just as the others have connections to each other the spiritual our spiritual part of us also has a significant impact on our emotional health which again like i said it also has a connection uh, towards our physical health okay so it, the spirit part is the one that uh, keeps us um, alive in with god okay i hope i answered that yeah so like i was saying the focus is a lot more on um uh, the focus is a lot more on um, on the soul through the lesson this is what we will be looking at is is on on the soul uh so non believers are two parts beings if their spirit is dead so the spirit is still there but it is uh, it is not an active element of a non believer it, it doesn't mean that it is it's not there but yes unless and until they come to a place of a fellowship with god it is in they are a three part being but the spirit part of them like you said yes is dead okay um okay i think beth you had asked another question only when we know god do we become tripart non believers also have understanding of right and wrong okay so scripture does mention that that um, uh, you know that that uh, 
people are given conscience to understand a right and wrong but to follow the will and the the uh, the word of god requires a regeneration of the spirit okay so yes there are non believers who understand because you are also given an intuition to to know but to follow it to be in connection with god requires a regeneration okay um what about non believers who are actively involved with evil magic etc are their spirits alive their spirits are alive to the to demonic influences not to the influences of god okay um this drawing is not included in your pdf okay all right so do unbelievers have a spirit okay so i think we we've, we've, we've mentioned that yes they do but then it is it is dead because because they do, they are not born again and not saved within within the spirit that's what sin did it um deadened the spirit um and it is only through salvation that we have our uh, our spirits that are alive and open to the to the work of the holy spirit in our lives the the spirit is is also alive to the work of demonic spirit so so either you are you know the, the spirit either has an influence from something or from some spirit so it is the holy spirit or it is a demonic demonic uh, work or not that all so this doesn't mean that unbelievers have a demonic spirit in them but it is open it is open to the influence of the demonic spirit and so also are believers uh, believers open to that to that so depending on where we are regenerated and where we are at so that that is a possibility believers can be oppressed by by the uh, by demonic forces not possessed but they can be oppressed we will be looking into this a lot more in detail uh, as we go on okay uh, moving ahead um, yeah moving ahead uh, i think mangi i'd i'd like to uh, uh, discuss what you said what does it mean what what does the word mind and heart mean so here when we look at the terminologies there may be certain ter terms that are used interchangeably like for example uh, when 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 there is the references sometimes that's made to the inner man it refers to both the spirit as well as the soul or uh, when you refer to the heart it's uh, uh, in some places it's used to refer to the spirit uh, of man but there are places in the uh, old testament where it makes a reference to both the spirit and the soul together so um, in depending on the references uh, you know when you look up the um, the actual the, the meaning of it uh, you understand what exactly is it that it's being referred to so heart in some places refers to the spirit heart in some places refers to both the spirit and the soul together okay like um uh, and it's in your notes in genesis 6 genesis 6 5 it talks about how god sees the wickedness of man um and that every imagination of the thought was only evil continually so here we see that there are functions of imagination and thought which gets associated with the mind so when we look at the soul we understand that the soul is one that comprises of who you are you you are represented by your soul uh, the the uniqueness of who you are comes from the from the soul as it says in proverbs uh, 27:19 um as in water face reflects face so a man's heart reveals the man over here uh, referring to um uh, you know usually referring to the inner person which means the soul as well as the spirit the, the greek word that is used here it refers to both the spirit and the soul so what um, a man's heart is what reveals the the actual man just a, a quick uh, um description um a quick description of um, 
uh, what uh, flesh means uh, here again it's there there in the notes when we're looking at flesh we read about a lot in the uh, about the flesh um, in different parts of scripture and the the references that are made here is in galatians 5 19 to 21 where the flesh is something that refers to the uh, desires uh, of the body and of the soul so uh, you know i'm just going to read out galatians 5 19 to 21 it says now the works of the flesh are evident which so it talks it talks about the works uh, of the flesh okay the product of of those wrong desires or those uh, evil desires is adultery fornication uncleanness lewdness idolatry sorcery hatred contentions jealousies outbursts of wrath selfish ambition dissensions heresies envy murders drunkenness revelries and the like of which i tell you beforehand just as i also told you in time past so so we see that there are uh, wrong deeds as well as emotions um, that comprise uh, of of the flesh here and uh, some of them, uh, you know, as, as we look at are more wrong emotions like jealousy, anger, envy, the ambitions that are there, outbursts of wrath, um, uh, quarrelsome. So these, these are all talking about the flesh part of it. Okay. Um, all right. I'm just going to pause here for a couple of minutes to just check if there are any further questions. Uh, any questions or any thoughts? Okay. All right. Um, uh, what? What? Let's let's do one thing. Let's uh, uh, close for a for a short break and come back so that you know we can have continuity into moving on to the next part of it, where we where we're going to be looking at uh, what, the first part, just looking at the difference between what the brain and the soul is, and then we will just delve a little detail into what are some problems that are related to the soul okay uh, so on my clock it's 10 49 um, let's meet at 11 uh, 11 o'clock uh, uh, after our break <laughs> 